Hello and a warm welcome to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. We're still in that difficult time where we've got a bit of flat racing, a bit of jumps racing leading up to the Grand National, but soon the flat will be well and truly here. But yeah, look, we've got some racing this week and we're hoping that we have Kelso. They're going to be inspecting, but we've definitely got an all-weather card at Kempton to look forward to as well. Another great panel this week. We've got the anti-postman himself, Mr. Robbie Wilders. We've got our future stars, two-year-old handicapper Matt Gardner. And from Unibet, we have Ed Nicholson. Ed, how are things? Hopefully we get some good racing this weekend. I mean, Kempton's card looks great, but we, we just, fingers crossed, Kelso's on. Fingers crossed that Kelso meeting. It looks like a cracker. Mm. Lots of prize money and offer and um, some interesting bets. So let's hope that gets the go-ahead. Apparently it's going to be dry on friday but then again rain on saturday so it's a bit difficult for them up there isn't it deciding what to do but let's hope it goes ahead absolutely and they're going to be plenty of offers for today's postcard set is that right yeah we've got an offer for every single itv race so let's hope they all go on for that reason as well <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, and we'll get stuck into all of those right now. We kick off the show at Kelso, where we're hoping to get racing. The 150 is where we start, which is a handicap hurdle over three and a quarter miles. This is a Class 2 event where Major Fortune tops the market with Unibet at the time of recording at 9-4. to four. Aidan May is 5-1. to one. Five All is 15-2. to uh, Ailey Rose is 10-1. to one. Dead Shout also 10-1. to one. Lady in the Park 10-1. to 11-1 to one Crystal Glory and 12-1 to one and bigger the rest. Matt, I'll come to you. You haven't been on the show for a while. Um, you're probably in the time of year now where you're quite excited to get stuck into the flat. But I've asked you to preview some jumps racing. So who do you like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You throw, throw me a little curveball there. But um, yeah, I, you mentioned Major Fortune. I think he's he's probably going to be hard to beat, isn't he? He's he got a really interesting profile in that he's a skeleton horse that started out in handicaps off 79. And he, he's won five on the bounce up to a mark of 101. Um the the cumulative distance winning distance for those five is less than 10 lengths you know the handicappers find it really hard to to peg him down um he's up to 112 now but you'd fancy he's going to take all the beating again um if there's the, the one at a bigger price that i think might run okay is imaginary dragon um he is unexposed um and his form stacks up pretty well he was second to a, a next time out winner at newcastle went and won himself uh, the time after um I mean, it was a pretty solid effort last time on, on, on firmer ground and, and, and back in the mud. I think he'll probably outrun a big price, but he's, he's going to have to go some to beat the favourite, I'd have thought. OK, major fortune. One vote for the favourite format, but a bit of a mention there for Imagining Dragon at 12 to 1 currently with Unibet. Robbie Wilde as the anti-postman to you next. Another vote for major fortune or can this get beaten? Nah, afraid not, uh, Sam. Obviously, see the case he's been in excellent form lately. He's up to 112, though. I remember when he got beaten off 81 a few months ago. I mean, he's obviously improved a hell of a lot since then, but this would be the best race he's contested by far. Um, just looking at the prices, I thought the one that stood out at 50 to 1 was Skippy on. Uh, this horse was quite a smart novice herder a couple of seasons ago for Tom Lacey. He's third in that grade two at Warwick. And then he's also third in the Haydock grade two behind Hillcrest. Um, he sort of lost his way for Lacey. He's joined Stuart Colford. Uh, ran no real races for this stable the first few times, but there was a bit more spark on his last start switch back to hurdles when he was fourth over this course and distance in first time cheap pieces. That came off a few months break. And he's down a couple of pounds extra to 121. If he puts it all together, he's definitely well treated. So I thought at 50s, he might give you a good run for your money. OK, another vote for the favourite, but one at a big price. Skipping at around 50 to 1 from Mr. Wilders there. And Ed Nixon, we could kick off the show with a hat-trick for the favourite, could we? Yes, we can. Um, Major Fortune is the obvious one, isn't he? Well, for the reasons already mentioned, um, five on the bounce. His rating has gone up, but he's won easily and, and not won by that far each time. So we just don't know how good he is. His improvements come for a step up in distance and the heavy ground. I mean, that's one key thing. If we're looking at these races now, we're going to have to go for horses that go in heavy, not just soft. And he's won twice on heavy going. The one worry, I, well, the two worries I have about him is that when a horse does run up a, a sequence of races over a short period of time and then have a break, sometimes that catches up on them. It's a strange thing, but sometimes it does. And probably the more, the more uh, pertinent point is that he is going up in class. He's been lording it over class fives um, for the last few months. And now he's up in a class two uh, 
for that reason, he carries a low weight, which will help in the heavy ground, 10 stone four. Um, but that would just be a little bit concerned. He is taking on better horses. Has he, has he been a flat track bully sort of thing? You know, has he been beating horses that he should be beating? Um, so that would be a slight way. So nine to four is probably about as short as you want to go, I think. But yeah, on, on all known form, he's a horse in form, goes on heavy going. Um, you've, got to, you've got to select him really, haven't you? Major fortune. OK, three votes for Major Fortune then for trainer Dan Skelton, who's obviously going for that trainer's title this year. We haven't got long left until that will be decided. Uh, let's move on to the 225 at Kelso. Then another handicap hurdle over two mile, five furlongs, another class two event. And Irie Street is 11 to two. North Parade is six to one. Kilter also six to one. 15 to two about Ellie Dupuy and Dance V. Forgewell, 8 to 1. Autumn Return, 17 to 2. Double figures. Bar these. Ed Nicholson, to you first. Any offers in this race, and who do you like? Yes, there is uh, an offer. Extra place for this particular race. We've got extra places for nearly every race um, on the ITV card um, this weekend. Um, and you do need an extra place here. I, I'm going to be looking at an each way selection myself. Um, uh, there's a race at Kelso not long ago, 27 days ago, where the first two are the ones that interested me. I was originally looking at Aloy Dupuy and basically thinking, well, that's that's improving. It's got it's got the form in the book. It loves Kelso. Four of its last, uh, sorry, three of its last four wins uh, have, have been at Kelso. Um, he's won on soft ground. He's you know he's done really well. And I was going to tip him up. Then I looked at the form, looked at the race, and I noticed that he only just got a home ahead of Forged Well last time. And, and I looked a bit more at Forged Well's form. He's a lightly raced horse, you know. He's only run four times. He's been one, one, one second, one third. Um, he's probably improving and he's probably going to improve more past Eloy de Puyo. And I thought maybe getting the pound, I think I worked it out that he's getting a pound for, le for less than a, what is it, a short head or a head or something. Um, I just thought that the, that maybe should be the selection. So Forged Well is going to be my selection around about eight to one, but I will be backing it each way with that extra place if I could. OK, four as well, eight to one. Yeah, extra place with Unibet for this race. Robbie Wilders, are you going to need that extra place? Have you got us the winner? You're going to need it. I certainly haven't. Um, I respect Ed's case about forged well, but I just thought this was the kind of race I just have no interest in betting in. So I'll pass it over to Matt. Oh, a race that Robbie will be leaving alone. No harm in doing that. Matt Gardner, straight into you then. Might be a bit of a hospital pass out on my ass. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like Kilter um, I think it, it's really open I think he, he, if there is one that's ahead of its mark I think it's probably him um, pretty unexposed overall improved to win at Sub on his penultimate start bumped into a, a progressive one of Jenny Candlish's last time and I really like the way that he saw that race out he was really strong at the line he's bred to stay further so I think going up in trip on, on what's going to be bottomless ground will, will, will probably suit him he might be more of a chaser in time. That might be really where he really sort of comes into his own. But um, I like his profile, and yeah, I think he'll I think he'll run well. Okay, there we go. Kilter then for Matt Gardner, and a vote for Forge. Well, Fred Nixon, no uh, horse for Robbie Barders in this race. But like I say, look, there's seven races on ITV. You do not have to have a bet in every race. The MO here at the Racing Post and Unibet is only gamble with money you can afford to lose. Let's move on then to the next race, which is the three o'clock at Kelso, and this is a, a five-horse race. But you could make a case for all of these. Two shots of tequila is two to one. Does he know nine to four? Elvis Mail is three to one. Your own story. 13 to 2. Bally Coos is 8 to 1. Robbie Wilders, then no bet in the last race, but five horses here who you could probably make a case for all of these in this handicap chase. Yeah, you certainly could, Sam. Uh, betting here for me certainly uh, is your own story. I was quite surprised he was such a big price in relation to two shots of tequila. Uh, these two horses met recently at Newcastle. It was your own story's first start in about 10 months. He's entitled to have needed it. And I thought he ran quite well in the circumstances. He's going to be about four pound better off with two shots of Keeler this time. Who's favourite? Entitled to be a bit fitter for the run. And essentially, he was quite a promising stayer last season. He was sent off uh, joint favourite for the Scottish National. Didn't didn't acquit himself badly in sixth place there. He's got form on heavy ground as well. The last time he ran heavy before a season return was a career best on RPRs at that point. And off only ten stone two. I definitely think he's too big at around 13 to 2. Yeah, 13 to 2 of Unibet currently. There's only five runners, but one of the outsiders of the lot in here. Ed Nixon to you next. What's the offer in this race? 
Uh, it, the offer is for me to you is the selection that's going to win. Um, we don't have a we don't have an extra <laughs> player because there's don't. only five runners. But um, I mean, I really fancy Elvis Mail. I really do. Um, I've tipped him before on the show, and um, I just love it when he runs mm. at Kelso. We all know he's a Kelso specialist. Won five times there, um, but has run well in defeat too. Uh, ran at Utoxa last time out in a, in a hurdle race um, on heavy going. Um, wasn't fancy to win that day, was 33 to 1, um, and comes back to Kelso having previously run third in a nice um, listed race at, uh, at Kelso behind Thunder Rock. Now, this is back in Handicap Company, which I think will suit. He made a few too many mistakes in that race at Kelso uh, when 13 lengths behind Thunder Rock. Um, and based on his form um, in October, uh, when he beat Highland Hunter in a handicap chase at Kelso over this distance, um, when rated 143, he slipped back down to 143. You would have to say he's got a great chance at a track we know he really likes. Um, so I think I think he'll be difficult to beat here on a track that he loves, and we know he goes on heavy. He's won and been placed on heavy going, um, and he's back down to a mark that he's won over the course and distance. So I think thumbs up for this horse in this particular race. Elvis Mel, yeah, Ed, a big fan of this horse, tipped up on the postcast before, hoping this horse can go and do the business on Saturday. And Matt Gardner, five horses, one winner. Who is it? Uh, it's not a race I like, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, uh, I, I found it hard to fancy any of them, really. It'd be a really tentative vote for Elvis Mel with, with, alongside Ed. Um, his jumping issues are, are pretty well established, but small field, not going to go much of the pace. I can't imagine there'll be all that much pressure on his jumping. And, you know, goes well in the mud, goes well at Kelso. Yeah, very, very tentative vote, I think. OK, tentative vote for Elvis. Mail then, let's move on to the final race we cover at Kelso, which is the 335. This is a Mayor's Novices Handicap Hurdle over two miles, class two event, where Manir and Swade have the top two in the market here. Brucio, 7-2. Lily de Burle, 13-2. Shake Tower Fella, uh, Feather is 13-2. La Vida Vida is 7-1. Mighty Moth, 15-2. Palacios is 8-1. 8-1 about Strong Bell and double figures about the rest. And I'm sure there must be an extra place in here for me, Ed Nicholson. Yep, there is an extra place here. Um, it's seven to two, the field, and it's a difficult race, isn't it? Um, the one that my eye was immediately taken to was uh, Lily de Burle, um, primarily because I fancy the horse that uh, beat uh, beat Lily de Burle last time out in the Queen's uh, the Queen's Prize at Kempton. So that's at three fifteen. So we'll have a bit of a form line, albeit from flat for, for, to National Hunt. But um, I then had a look look at the, the runners in more detail, and I do fancy one at a very big price here. Um, number 11, follow and go. Evan Williams. Um, I know Evan very well from Chepstow, and 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 he obviously runs a lot of horses in the uh, in the in the in the Welsh area. I think he's had a thousand runners at Fosslas alone since 2000. But he's only been to Kelso um, five. Well, he's only had five runners at Kelso since since his century started, um, and he's actually got quite a good record. It's the least number of runners in any of the 42 tracks he's ever had runners at uh, this century. But he, he's 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 done pretty well. He's won one. He's come second once, and he's been third twice when he does send them that long, long distance up to Kelso. And follow and go looks like a progressive uh, mare. She's run a couple of times at Cheps, though. Um, she loves heavy going. If you go back in the form on the excellent racing post site, you can see a winner bumper at Foss Lass on heavy ground. Now, that day, she halved in the betting in the market. They knew they had a horse that was capable of winning first time out, and she won easily on heavy going. Now, maybe the others didn't go on the going, but at least we know that follow and go does go on heavy going. So Evans obviously targeted this race. It is just a mare's hurdle, isn't it? So he's targeted it, but he's also been assured there's going to be heavy ground if it goes, goes ahead. And this is only her second race in the handicap. Um, interestingly, she's been dropped down to two miles. When you look at the replays, you think she probably will go further in time. Um, but maybe they're going to go from the front and just try to see if they can outstay everybody in the mud. Uh, and I thought at 14 to 1, um, she was worth an each way bet, given that they don't send many up there. And when they do, they run well. And she likes soft ground, well, she likes heavy ground. And she's still very young. And it's only her second handicap run. So a bit of a, a guess, but 14 to 1, I thought was a fair price each way. The consistent follow and go then for Ed Nixon. Yeah, 14 to 1. Currently a big price there. Matt Garner, to you next. This one here, we've got extra places. Uh, who do you like? Yeah, I, I fancy Brucio for the grade two mares race here last month. And she got brought down at first. Uh, no fault of her own at all. And and providing she's none the worse for that, and the, then the case still stands pretty much. She's essentially a, a, a progressive mare that's almost certainly got more to come. Um, you'd fancy a mark in the low 130s is, is kind of gettable for her. So, yeah, assuming she's she's all right, then um, I'd expect her to go pretty close. 
Yeah, top weight Brucio, 7-2 currently. Robbie Wilder's favourites have to beat or worth taking on? Uh, could be. I, I prefer the other Manier and Suede runner, though, Lily de Burley. Um, I mean, she was a proper top-class bumper performer a couple of these seasons ago. Uh, won the grade two at Leopardstown there in good style. A lot of her hurdles, she's still a maiden over hurdles, but she's been bumped into good horses. Like, she was third to Irish Point in the grade three last season. Um, the horse who beat her... Uh, Catrick on a return, sweet fantasy, like Ed, I quite like for the race we're going to talk about in a bit. Um, the time of that race was really good on that card. I think she probably just bumped into one, and that performance qualified her for this race, which is worth quite a lot of money. So I think uh, about 13 to two, four places, that looks uh, a real standout each way bet for me. OK, Lily de Berle then with those four places for Robbie Wilders. One vote for follow and go for Ed Nicholson and then a vote for the favourite Brucio for Matt Garner. So there we go. That's the National Hunt action covered. Hopefully we get the Kelso card on, but we're going to be covering an all-weather card at Kempton shortly after this. I want betting on the horses to be anything but flat. With an app that impresses every time out. You're on. Want to watch live streaming of races in the UK, Ireland and around the globe? And get a chance to win even bigger with three uni boosts every day on any horses you want. Unibet, you're on. Welcome back to the second part of the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Race Post, sponsored by Unibet. Sam Hart, Robbie Wilders, Matt Gardner and Ed Nicholson spinning you through the action on ITV this weekend. We go to Kempton now for an all-weather card, a cracking all-weather card actually on Saturday. And we kick things off with a 205, which is the one-mile snowdrop Philly Stakes. It's a listed contest where Many Tears is topping the market currently with Unibet at 7-2. Adelaide is 9-2. Choisir is also 9-2. Mystic Pearl, 6-1. Zuki, 13 to 2. Julia Augusta is 7 to 1 and double figures bar these. Now we'll go to the man who couldn't be more excited about the flat returning. We're going to go to Matt first. But Matt, I looked at this race and I saw Swasir and Julia Augusta. The, they came up against each other at the back end of last year and uh, Swasir gave Julia Augusta £4 that day. This time I believe it's £8. There was only a neck between them. They're the two that I was fascinated between. I thought Julia Augusta was quite a big price in here. Yeah, I think she is. I, I, I'll be honest, I, I fancy Schwarzier. Um mm. I think she's a bit of a standout in this. She, like I say, she gave her four pound, but I think she gave her a, 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 that and a pretty handy beating, to be honest with you. Um, she's she's generally progressive, and you look through her form, it stacks up really well. She she won a properly competitive uh, Goodwood handicap last summer, and she beat Novus, who ended the season winning a Group Three rated one hundred and eight. Um, you know that that Kempton win was back in November. Um, she was coming back from a bit of a break, but the yard's in good form. Um, I, I'd make a. Uh, she's. I think you said she's nine to two, something like that at the yeah, moment. Around that, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd make her way shorter than that, like five to two, two to one, something like that. I think she's 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 got a really good chance here. Yeah. Yeah, I made it between these two, Schwarzier and Julia Augusta. Ed Nixon, any offers? And are you with Matt here? Yes, I am indeed. Schwarzier is my selection. We're actually offering money back second or third as cash um, in this race, our uh, flagship offer. Um, and it's a good race, isn't it, the Snowdrop Phillies? a listed mm. race. We've sponsored it in the past and some nice horses have won. Have won. But I, I looked at all the form of Schwarzier, both in the racing post and, and looked at the video as well. And I've just got a feeling she only just does enough. If you look at the time, that she, she's won four races... And we talked about a horse earlier on, Major Fortune, not winning by more than 10 lengths in the five races he's won. Well, she's not she's not won by more than three quarters of a length in those four races. She won by a short head, a, a head, a neck and three quarters of a length. Um, I, I think she's got, a, I think she, she's smart. She's rated 100 now, so she will have to be to show her best form, um, having won a Unibet sponsored handicap at Kempton um, over this course and distance um, off 98. But I, I do I do think that she's got a few pounds in hand. Um, my, my one worry, and it's a very small worry, is that the jockey, who's a very good jockey, Harry Davies, has yet to race, race her. Uh, she hasn't been on her in a race. And she does, I've seen the videos I see, she does hang. She's hung both left and right, depending on which track she's been at. Um, so I'm sure such a good jockey as, as Harry will, 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 will ensure that she keeps as straight as possible. But she, she, there's no reason why she should hang sometimes. And she, she has, both on the all-weather and at Goodwood. Um so um yeah that would be a concern but my when when a horse hasn't run for the number of days that she hasn't obviously the new season 138 i just like to have a look at the stable see if they're in form 
And um, Simon and Christopher Stable are in form. They've had three winners from 10 runners in the last 14 days. So, yeah, I, I, I actually agree with Matt. I think she'll be shorter than nine to two. She's coming for a bit of support. She was as big as six to one early this morning. Um, but now she's nine to two. I, can, she, I, I think she's got a favourite myself. OK, hot in the markets, was here then, still 9-2. Um, Robbie Wilders, you may make this a hat-trick, but the horse that might be of interest is the one that Joseph O'Brien's sending over. I mean, the fact that Joseph's sending one over is definitely worth taking note of, and booking an excellent Kempton specialist in William Buick as a jockey on board has to be taken note of. Yeah, it certainly does, Sam. It's funny you say that because uh, the horse I put up in the Annie Postman start of the week, Zuki, at mm. 20, so had William Buick dropped up, for Charlie McBride, I thought that was quite an eye-catching booking. He's ridden the first to second M3 runs for the stable that year. But now he switched to Adelaide, um, which is probably a, a negative for Zuki. But at the same time, Sheen Murphy's on board, so that should be yeah. fine. I still think she's got a, a pretty decent chance, though. Not everything went away last season. Um, she fared best of the held-up runners when bumping into a good horse at Doncaster. Then she was undone by a track position at Ascot. Would have won a listed race there if she had a better track position when it turned into a bit of a dash. And then sort of ran okay. She wasn't beaten very far by Julia Augusta at Lingfield on her final out. And just think she's more like the right price now at sort of around 8-1. to one. Um, But I'd have to agree now that Shrazier is the one to beat. She's basically the same price as she was at the start of the week, essentially. Even though the fact that Nova, who is favourite, isn't running and cloud cover who has entered so impressive at Newcastle on uh, Good Friday last weekend. Just think she's obviously got, got a verdict over Julia Augusta. She's the highest rated in the field. And 9-2, to two, definitely been underestimated. So if I could get any of that, I'd definitely go back in to go with my Zuki selection. OK, Swazir then and Zuki for Robbie Wilders. Yeah, Zuki was put up at 20-1 to 1 at the start of the week by Robbie Wilders in his anti-post column. You can get hold of that using the Race Post website. Go on, you can subscribe to the email and get those every Tuesday evening. Certainly worth doing because Robbie does pick out some big prices and one that is a big price actually well he put up at the big prices in the next the 240 at kempton is the rosebury handicap one mile three furlongs where old herovian was the horse that rory put up currently four to one with uni betting tinzo is nine to two chillingham is six to one kemhan and laffy along with cannon rock they're ten to one twelve to one about killybegs warrior captain willsburg and youthful king and bigger the rest in here. Robbie, I'll let you take things away here because you put up older roving at the start of the week. You're still keen on the chances? Cheers, mate. Yeah, I am. Um, I just, just think this horse has got potential of being a, a group performer. Um, just a couple of really impressive wins on the all-weather sort of this time last year. And he was quite eye catchingly thrown into the group for our Rayan stakes after that. He was sent off a 7-1 to one chance, but that was the same sort of price as horses like Isra, horses like Kamari, uh, Bolshoi Ballet, who went our favourite for the derby a couple of years ago. And the fact that he's rated a stone lower, and he did run quite well. I know he's beaten sixth out of seven, but he was just incredibly keen that day. And he was the last off the bridle. It was only in the last furlong that he eventually faded. I thought that suggested there is quite a big engine there, and the handicapper has somewhat surprisingly dropped him to 93. Uh, first time tongue tie is a slight concern, but I'd like to think he'd get enough of a decent pace to chase here to uh, enable him to settle down with this big field. He's obviously unbeaten on the all-weather, and I'd be pretty surprised if he wasn't a good bit better than 93. So he's actually still 9-2 to two of a couple of firms. Um, I think that's pretty fair. OK, old Herovian for all you Wilders then. Ed Nicholson to you next then. Who do you like in this one? Well, first of all, we've got to extra place in this particular contest, the Rosebury Handicap. Uh, and I, I thought it's quite strange that given it's 50 odd thousand to the winner and it's an all age 14 runner race, there's only one previous course winner on the all weather in, in, in the field. And um, you would have thought that a few trainers with those sort of horses would have, would have, would have tried to be pinpointing them at this race. And that horse is the one that I'm going to choose, which is Kemhan. Um, ran it in the Ebor. It's top weight. Um, so it's a classy individual, um, ran down the field in the Ebor 17th or so. Um, and has run since at Kempton um, recently, well not recently, 70 days ago um, when he finished fourth and ran on that day, probably over a distance that's maybe a little bit too too much for him. He's back down in trip by furlong. Um, he's he, he can run from the front and he can be held up. Um, I just like the profile of the horse in this race. Um, it's quite a big price, um, double figures. Uh, and I thought Neil Callan's booking was interesting. Neil's back on, having won on him uh, on the track. Um 
last year. So yeah, that's that's a sporting bet at around about eleven to one. Kem Han um, got a few things going for him in the Rosebery, I think. Okay, Kem Han for a nick some of those extra places here in the Rosebery then, and Matt Gardner to you for the selection the two forty. Yeah, interesting race. Um... I think Robbie's case for old Horovian is is solid and he's he's definitely an interesting horse. I mean, ninety three is a proper guess up by the handicapper. Like he, you know, he, he he could be anything really. Um, my bit of a concern is that he, he he was still sort of learning to race a bit when we last saw him, and he's been off since May. Whether he's just a bit buzzy and that sort of thing that that sort of put me off a little bit. Um, I thought Intenso was just really solid. He's you know he's only gone up eight pound for basically Bolton up at Wolverhampton last time. Um, He's a half brother to Amtiaz, who won that copper horse handicap at Royal Ascot. It ended up rated about 107. And I kind of thought he underachieved a little bit. So there's, there's definite scope in his in his pedigree. He's he, he's messed about a little bit in some of his races. He, he wandered about in front at Wolverhampton, and he's been a bit keen before. And whether he's a, a little bit quirky or not, I'm not sure. But it was only his sixth start, so he's maybe still learning just a bit. And yeah, I think off off 98, he he's definitely got some mileage in that. Okay, the connections of Nashua then Tenzo in the two forty at around about nine to two for Matt Garner. On to the final race we cover on this week's show, which is the three fifteen at Kempton. It's the Queen's Prize handicap. This is part of the London Stayer Series qualification. It's a class two event over two miles where Sweet Fancy is topping the market for the James Owen Yard at eleven to four. Noval Legend is one hundred thirty. Spirit Mix are seventeen to two. Tritonic and Alcarma nine to one and double figures about the rest of the field in here. My nap's going to come in this race, so I won't make a case as of yet. But Ed Nicholson, I'll come to you. Who do you like in this? And Any offers in this one? Yeah, extra place in this uh, this race. It's uh, another competitive handicap on your weather, so extra place. The fascinating one for me is Sweet Fantasy. Um, we've talked about a hurdler at Kelso, um, who Sweet Fantasy beat last time at Catterick uh, by 17 lengths. Um, and that hurdler is, is not, is, she's not bad, as we know. And we've spoken about the, that race in detail. Um, but she's, it's interesting because James Owen, as we all know, is an up and coming trainer, um, was training the Arab, Arabs and did, has been doing that successfully for a number of years. And we all know that he's got some nice horses that are going in and winning at the moment on, on, on the thoroughbred tracks now. Uh, but he got this sweet fantasy. Quite cheap, I thought. 30,000 guineas at the uh, Mayor's Tattersall Sales. Um, she was previously with Rafe Beckett, um, had been rated 87, is, is rated 87 today, I think, um, having won off 82, won a couple of times on the flat. Um, and that they were on soft going at Epsom over 12 furlongs. I just thought, given the weight, she's relatively lowly weighted. I know it's quite, quite a compressed handicap, but nine stone three. Um, having seen that form at Catterick, where she absolutely hosed up, that sh- that looked to me to be much the best form we've ever seen from her. Um, I just thought maybe it's worth trying. I've noticed that she's coming for plenty of support since the early market moves, mm. um, and is now favourite. Uh, I yeah, she, she looks she looks an interesting contender, and I'd just be I wouldn't be surprised if James has kind of targeted this race because they were talking about entry and they were talking about lots of other jump meetings, but um, they've come here for this pot of uh, 23 grand and, and maybe, maybe it's something she can pick up on the way to be- better, even better and bigger things. Okay, sweet fancy, 11 to 4. Aidan Keeley taking off the three pounds there. Yeah, it does seem like a bit of a target, this from James Owen. Matt Gardner, to you, the final race we cover on this week's show. Who do you like? Uh, I narrowed it down to two and that's about as far as I got. Um, maybe the top two. Pro- <laughs> uh, C- circuit Broker, I think, is interesting. Um, he, I mean, one physically, he's massive. He's got so much scope, um, and he won here before he went and finished second to Urban Outlook at, at Haydock. Um, that horse then went and, and finished second in a competitive back end York handicap. Um, he's been he was bought by John Joe for two hundred and sixty grand. I assume to go hurdling, and he he hasn't. Um, which would be a bit of a concern, I suppose. But, you know, he, he looks the, really the sort that's going to do better as a four-year-old. Um, and the other one is, is Spirit Mixer, who has been very likely raced. We've only seen him twice since, like, mid-2022. But all of his four-year-old form is just rock solid. Um, he looked to retain plenty of ability at Lingfield last time. And if he builds on that, then I think he's he's definitely got some scope from the mark. But it's, it, it's really competitive, and uh, um, you can make a case for quite a few, I think. 
early tees there, but I'm very keen on Spirit Mixer in this race as well. And Circuit Breaker, the other one at around 14 to 1. John Joe O'Neill and James Doyle. You won't be seeing that combination too often, will you? Uh, Robbie Wilders, to you then for the final selection this week. Who are you with? Yeah, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stick with Sweet Fantasy. Um, sometimes it's hard to jump ship when a horse you put up recently for a race that's been cancelled then races um, like quite soon after. I was all over Sweet Fantasy last week for that Musselburgh Queens Cup race, so I'll give her another chance here. Um, obviously, we touched upon that Lee de Burle form line, good time at Catrick. I think that's decent form. James Owen just has a real knack of just improving horses no end. He's had a couple of really well backed winning stable debutants just this week alone. Really rate the trainer. I rate Aidan Keeley claiming three pounds as well. I think uh, 130. That's pretty fair price. But I do I do respect that case about the John Joe Neal horse. Definitely uh, really well really well bred. Um, James Doyle certainly catching the eye. But I'll stick with Sweet Fantasy Sam. Okay, there we go. Two votes for Sweet Fantasy then, and a vote for Circuit Breaker and a small vote for Spirit Mixer as well from Matt Gardner. So that's it. That is the ITV Racing Covered. We'll be back shortly after this with our other bets elsewhere and also a look ahead to the Grand National Meeting, which comes next week. So we'll get stuck into that shortly after this. Welcome back to the final part of this week's Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet, Sam Hart, Robbie Wilders, Matt Gardner and Ed Nicholson. Now taking you through any other selections for the weekend. I'll just quickly go around and see if anyone has anything else for the weekend. Matt Gardner to you. Is there anything else to focus on this weekend at all, Matt? Uh, yeah, a couple of interesting ones. One at Kempton, the the last race, it's a, it's a good sprint handicap. Um, the, the three most interesting ones are drawn widest. Uh, interestingly i suppose but i think as your angel might just be quite a long way ahead of her mark uh she did really well to run down the caltonian who's been kind of one of the success stories of the winter and at that point he was still banging form um when she beat him at newcastle uh i think she's got plenty more to come and then free to dream in the 545 at chelmsford another did really well to win last time he's only gone up three pound and uh, i think that'll underestimate him so uh, yeah two two interesting flat bets i think there we go. Two to look for. Then I think last time Matt was on, he gave us any other bets and they won. So take note of those. Uh, Ed Nicholson, to you. Is there anything else this weekend for you or sticking to the ITV cards? No, nothing extra for me. I'll let, I'll let Robbie take all the glory. Yeah, see if Robbie has got anything. Cheers, Ed. Yeah, got one at the Curra. Um, the 255, the Group 3 alleged stakes. Decent little race, actually. Um, you got horses like Helvick Dream running Crypto Force, uh, White Birch, who was running in all the classic trials last year in the classics. Um, horse I like here is Village Voice, trained by Jessica Harrington. Uh, ground's going to be really, really hard work at the car on Saturday. This filly is unbeaten on heavy ground. She won really nicely on her return from a layoff last season. I think she's going to relish it more than a lot of others here. And uh, I just like the fact that Jessica Harrington's entered her in the in the uh, Tatsworth Gold Cup next month. Mm. Could have kept her to only Philly's only company this season, but presumably they're going to go for something slightly bigger. So I wouldn't be surprised to see her go very well in that alleged uh, village voice. Yeah, Village Voice, yes, yeah, certainly will absolutely love the going at the Curra on Saturday. It's in the 255. be interesting to see whether ITV get hold of the Curra card if Kelso does get abandoned. Um, I thought on this week's show, as it's a little bit of a, a quick show this week, we'd have a quick look ahead to next week in the Grand National. Um, Ed Nixon, I'm going to come to you because you mentioned off air that we're you've been down to Nicky Henderson's. We're just fingers crossed that Nicky's horses run like they should do because after Cheltenham, it was so unfortunate for Nicky, but for him to have a big entry would be massive. Yeah, no one knows, do they? I mean, they're, they're healthy, they're, they're, they're working, they did a bit of um, schooling today, the entry horses, and um, but no one knows until they get to the course. I mean, the heavy ground's probably not going to help, is it? Because mm. um, if they've been off and then they've come back, it's... I didn't. I didn't obviously say that to Nicky, but that would that would um, that would be a slight worry. Uh, but yeah, they 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 some of the big shots were um, were, were hurdling and and schooling over fences. Shiskin, who I must say, happy birthday to Shiskin. He was foaled ten years ago today. 
Um, okay. And so it is his actual birthday, although all racehorses have their birthday on the 1st of January. Um, he looked great. Um, yeah, scored well. Um, and all systems go, I think he's running in the bowl. I think that's probably what he'd go for, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, it'd be great to see him there. Um, and so, so Gino was looking good as well. Um, he did a few, just a few um, hurdles. Um, it was very soft ground there. They they didn't do. They just did one set of hurdles because it was really soft on the gallops. Um, but yeah, they they all look well. But um, I mean, you know, everyone says in the stable, no one knows until they get to the track what how they're going to run. Hopefully, he's had a couple of winners recently, hasn't he? Um, he hasn't had many runners, but he's had a couple of winners. Uh, so hopefully, he's turned a corner. And he, what he did say, he said he's been taken back by all the uh, welcome wishes and everyone saying, yeah, yeah. you know, hope the horses are run run better in, in the next few weeks so he, he was he actually was was taken back by that he couldn't believe the amount of support that he's been getting from everyone on, on social media and and when he goes to the race course yeah i think that amount of communication that he's provided as well it's just been so well received by the racing community and uh great to hear that constitution hill's back as well after that scare earlier in the week so great to hear that he's back at the yard and we'll hopefully see him fingers crossed next season uh matt gardner have you had a look ahead to the the national i know you're not on next week's show but i mean you may even have a selection for the national itself what do you like uh, not for the national necessarily, to be honest. But there's the the, the one market that did interest me a bit was uh, the the Melling, and you know you you've got obviously Pick Dory's kind of been saved for this, but he's not going to get his ground, is he? Like he's I think he won it on heavy at Kempton once, but it was a small field, and he just sort of bossed it. You, you're basically getting the same price about Protector as you are him and um, John Bon, and. You know, one's not going to get their ground. John Bond's obviously got quite a bit to prove. I mean, if, if he runs, that is. Um, so, you know, protector at that intermediate trip in the Ryanair in the mud just seemed to really, really suit him. And it, it could be the making of him. So, um, yeah, if you're getting the same sort of price about him as you are Pick Dory, I know, I know where I'd rather be. He, um, he won the many clouds, didn't he, at Aintree on, on, on heavy going, didn't he, protector at? Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, I only remember because we sponsored it and it was a, a really good performance and everyone was instantly talking of the Gold Cup. But yeah, so he does like the track and, and, and he's performed over heavy going. So I think that's a really good good shout, actually. It'd be massive for the Trainers' Championship if you were to go and win that skeleton as well. It'd be massive for the prize money pot. Um, Robbie Wilders, what have you looked at ahead of me? Yeah. I know you probably always... did the anti-postman earlier in the week, were you? Yeah, I always find this meeting quite hard anti-post because for some reason we don't get the entries until so late so it's, it's quite a lot of time it's a bit of a guess like we've only really got national entry i've only got top entries as well uh, i've had one bet i am maximus before he won at fairy house so i'm getting quite excited about that. i've never had a grand national winner uh in my life I've, maybe i've not been betting as much uh for as long as the guys on this call um, <laughs> that's, that's a big isn't it that is a, that's a... <laughs> i'm just trying to <laughs> myself. i mean I've, i reckon i'm on a run of maybe like 25 to 30 horses backed in the national none of them have won so i'm open for <laughs> iron maximus i'm just a little bit i, I just think korak ramble has gone too short yes. uh, iron maximus is definitely better in after his win at um fairy house really impressive he's definitely going to handle the ground i thought quite tram would have had quite a hard race at cheltenham as well iron maximus has had a, a lot more time to recover from that and well he's just better treated essentially on the weights so i think at eight to one Getting quite excited, Sam, to be honest. So that's the only bet at the moment. There will doubtless be more when the entries come out, though. Absolutely, I'm sure there will. Um, I just want to quickly ask that question then about Corrick Ramble. I know we'll probably cover it next week, but too short or the right price, Matt Gardner? Uh, it, it depends, doesn't it? I, I think in the realms of like normal racing, you'd say he was too short, but it's such a... Um, You've got to be such a certain type of horse to and have certain characteristics to win that that it's almost like not a normal betting market in some ways, is it? But um, uh, I don't know. Can I go? Can I go about right? Does that does that work? Yeah, yeah, you can go about right. Yeah, if you think it's about right, not right. Ed, what's your opinion on Carrick Ramber as the favourite at the moment? Uh, right favourite, but I think he'll drift. Um, I mean, the one the one thing you've you've got about this race is not like a Grand National. You might see a picture of Red Rum winning his Grand National in 1977 with Tommy Stack. Look at the crowds, if you can see it. All the crowds were practically on the course. It was ridiculous. Um, but back in that day, when it was four and a half miles, you know, 
and the fences were as big as they were, it was a bit of a going back to the first win of the Grand National, a lottery. But now it's not, is it? I mean, the, the race is, 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 there's less runners, there's less, therefore there'll probably be less carnage, um, which is the reason for reducing the field, because um, the horses that fall won't be, there won't be so many of them running around. Um, and the distance is now only four and a quarter, which doesn't sound that much difference, but it, you know, it is. Um, so the class horses do tend to jump, jump round and, and they have better chances now than they had before. I think so. You know, Corrup Rambler has proved his class. He's won the Grand National before, and um, we've seen in recent years horses like Tiger Roll come back and, and do do well. Um, so yeah, he's a right favourite. He he looks he looks like he's got to be in if he jumps around the first four. But I just think he'll drift a bit. I think the bookies will just go in the morning. You'll get a bigger price. It might be a case of come the race. He's he's compressed the game. And as Matt says, he probably will go off about fives, but I think you probably get six sevens, even maybe maybe eights in the morning somewhere. Um, but I mean, I'd love to see Kitty's Light win it for uh, Christian Williams. Mm. Um, obviously, he couldn't run the horse in the race when the horse was probably handicapped quite well, um, um, or they might have not even got in the race to be fair back then. But because um, he was a, it was he was too young. But um, he's he's been. He's been put right for this race all season and um, Christian Williams' horses have come back to form a little bit in the last few weeks mm. um, and there'll be a, a big party if that wins, no doubt. I'm actually at Chepstow that day and uh, if Christian Williams and the team win with Kitty's like I'm staying in Wales for when they get back because <laughs> there'll, be there'll be a hell of a party um, in Bridge End if uh, Kitty's like does manage to win it. Um, and he's got a chance. I mean, he's definitely got a chance. We know that he like, we know that he's, he's, he stays. Um, small horse, obviously a flat bred horse. So that was that would be the worry. But with the fences being a little bit less big than they were previously, I, I think he's got a fair chance of getting around. He's just got to get in the race. That's the problem. He's uh, he's number 38. So he needs to, uh, he does need to get in the race. But yeah, I would love to see Kitty's light wins. But I think Corrick Rambler is the right favourite. Yeah. Okay, no, that's fair to say. I'm just trying to think now after Robbie said what he said, whether I've actually backed the Grand National winner myself. But I remember I was actually on that Tiger Tiger double the year that Tiger Roll won the National and Tiger Woods won the Masters in the same week. Wow. And I remember that was boosted. I think it's a hundred to one at one stage. But I remember being on that. But I don't think I've backed an outright winner of the National. I think that Tiger counts, Robbie. mate. I think that counts. Do you think? Yeah, no. Yeah. I, mean, I think you've done Mar quite well for yourself. The the and, and you're a year think... younger than me as well. So there you go. Well, look, it's the the Masters is next week as well. So we'll probably we may have a little bit of golf chat on this show next week but we've got myself graham robway johnny pierce and i'm sure ed will be there to join us for next week's show as well but before we leave we have got to get the weekend naps from the itv card this weekend and i'll start with you mr wilders who's the nap going to be this weekend cheers mate uh the nap is 240 at kempton old horovian old horovian then for robbie wilders matt gardner to you uh 205 kempton choicea Okay, choice for Matt Gardner. I'm going to go to the 315 at Kempton, Queen's Rise. I'm going to go for Spirit Mixer, who Matt mentioned earlier. Look, was second to True Shan in the Northumberland plate off one pound higher. This horse comes on, uh, looking at this horse's form, comes on for the run every time at the start of the season. Had a prep run at Lingfield, which I think absolutely ideal. Oshie Murphy takes the ride. I know they think a lot of this horse. I think this horse is far better than the mark of 96. So I'll have Spirit Mixer. And to Ed Nixon to finish us off, who's going to finish the lucky 15? Just a speculative um, bet this time, but I'm going to go for follow and go at a big price, 14 to 1, uh, the mare in the uh, 335 at Kelso, lightly raced individual, down the bottom of the handicap, and Evan Williams doesn't go to Kelso unless he's got a chance. Last time he went two years ago, he came back with a winner. He's only ever had five runners uh, this century, so I, I just take note that he's taken this mare up to Kelso, where the going is going to be heavy, and hopefully she's going to win the, the 335. Absolutely. Look, we don't mind a big price on this week's show. It's a big priced Lucky 15 there. You can see all our naps on screen now, and they will be boosted with Unibet at the time of upload of this podcast. So do go to unibet.co.uk, and you can get the boost there. And there'll be more offers from Unibet 9 a.m. the day of the racing on Saturday. So do look out for all of those offers. I've got about two minutes left. What's everyone up to this weekend? I always like to do this at the end of the show. Matt Gardner, to you, what are the plans this weekend? Uh, it all depends on the weather, doesn't it, mate? If it stopped, stopped raining for more than five minutes, we'd be all right. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Cycling opportunities have been very thin on the ground because of the weather. Um, I've got a load of stuff that the garden needs doing and everything, mate. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, there we go. So it's all weather dependent for you. Robbie Wilders has definitely got yeah. something plan with smiling. Well, I've always like got that. bits on, bits <laughs> on, mate. Well, I'm, I mean, you're up north, mate, aren't you? But it's meant to be 20 degrees in London on uh, Saturday. So... I'll be sun creaming up for sure and getting out and about once all of this racing's out of the way, Sam. 
There we go. Look, the flat season comes and the sun comes out. That's the best thing about it. And Ed Nicholson, for you this weekend, are we working? Uh, at Bath on Sunday for a really good meeting. £225,000 worth of prize money. Uh, good class two completes the card. Um, so, yeah, with the, the big pot, lots of runners. Uh, be good fun, I think. There you go. Bath is back. That's what we want to hear. Um, so there we go. That's it for this week's show. Grand National Week next week. We'll be back at the same time Thursday. We'll be covering Saturday's card at Aintree. We'll be do, do, doing a long part on just the Grand National itself going through the runners. Like I say, Graham Rob by Johnny Pearson and Ed Nicholson will be joining me for that. So don't forget to tune in for that. Do like, comment, share and subscribe. And we'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.